I'm honored, of course, to be honored. But I'm a sinner, saved by the grace of God in Christ Jesus, and I marvel at what God has done in my life. I know who I am, and I know how bad I am, and I know how much I need a Savior. And so Jesus has been a part of our life and my life from the beginning. That's just the way we were, the way we grew up, and God came into our family from the beginning. Helen's parents and my parents were Christian households, and that's just the way we grew up. And so you stand back and marvel at what God has done in your life, and you know whom to give the glory to, and I try every time I speak all over the world to give the glory to God, because I don't understand it. Jay and I had a humble little business. We started because we always wanted to be in business together. We met at Christian High School and said we're going to get in business after the war, if we survived and America survived. And so when we came home, we did. I really want to stop only for a moment to talk about the crisis we're in right now. Some of us are old enough in this room to have been involved in a battle against tyranny and dictators. Most of you have not, fortunately. But we knew that when we were fighting during World War II, it was either we won or we lost everything. And Hitler would take over. You should contemplate that. It might not be a Hitler from afar, but it might be a Hitler from nearby. At a later point, we employed a gentleman in Germany to run our German company. And one day we were traveling to a meeting together and he said to me, he said, you know, I was brought up in Hitler's youth corps. And I was being trained to be a commandante of cities like Grand Rapids. And that really brings it home to you, uh, what we're into at this time. I'm of a mind that if we don't prevail in this next election, it may be the last honorable election you have. That's just a personal sidebar. But this is serious business and serious time. And I use this occasion to add that, I guess. He talked about my speaking at the 50th anniversary. And I spoke about several things, but one of which was, and uh, our top producer in Japan said to me one day, he said, what does your religion have to do with your business? and the model you establish. And nobody ever asked me that question. And so I reflected on that and I reported on that to all of our people from all over the world. Our assemblage of leaders from, I have any, no idea what cultures and what religions and what, if any, they came from. Probably 80 countries were there people from 80 countries who were our top achievers in the world, some 5,000 of them, probably all millionaires. And so I reflected on what our Christian faith had done. And I used it as an opportunity to testify to them about Christianity being the foundation of our business. And our hope in Christ is what gave us the vision of offering hope to everybody to help them achieve to their greatest. And that even though they were not perfect, they could still achieve. That they had the potential to do more and to be more. And so our impact goes not just on the business, but because of the courage we give to people to believe. And one day a man from Grace Home Products came to see us, and I shared that with him too, and he 
been Peter Grace himself, the owner of the company, was not there, but his representative came to buy Amway. And we said, well, Jay and I said, let's listen to him. Let's see what somebody else thinks we're worth. It'd be kind of fun. <laughs> and so they came thinking they were going to make a big buy, I think. And after they told us what they thought we were worth and a few other things, we said, look, we're going to be honest with you. We're not really for sale. We just wanted to see what you thought about it. <laughs> and they said, seriously, if you don't sell to us, we're going to start a company to compete with you. And we're going to take you on. And I said, well, that's wonderful. He said, we have a factory in Cincinnati. It must be next to Procter & Gamble, one of our wonderful enemies that we've <laughs> fought so long. And he told us what he was going to do, and they had a wonderful guy selected to run their company, and they were going to emulate Amway, home product company. We weren't a big company in those days. We are now because of our kids who brought it to a big, big company. Our son Dick, who led that, was Steve and Andal, and now Doug works with Steve, and bringing it to levels that I don't think we ever could have dreamt of. And so I say to all of you, raise your sights. When we talk about reaching Christ, to people for Christ, raise your sights. It's time to get bold and get courageous. Anyway, I, I said, if you're going to do this, I want to give you our sales kit. I want to show you how to do it. So you, <laughs> so you have it right, and so you will do it right. And so they did start their company, and it failed after a few years. And I met Peter Grace one day at a big airport, and I said, Peter, what happened to your home product company? He says, you know damn well what happened. <laughs> I said, well, I really don't. He said, well, we closed it up. I said, I, I said, you know, I had rumors to that effect, but I don't understand it. I said, I gave your guy the kit telling him how to do it. <laughs> and he says to me, poking his big finger in my chest, my little chest in those days. He said, young man, you left something out. <laughs> And I thought about that. And what was it we left out? It was our love for people and our concern for their well-being. We are not a big company that was interested in how much money we could make, or well, sure, we like that too. But it wasn't driven by that. It was driven by our desire to help them be better and to do better and to make more. And that was a secret. To him, it was Wall Street. It was a big company, and how can we run the number? But to us, it wasn't that. To us, it was our desire to own our own business. And that's what everybody seems to want in many cases. Not everybody, therefore, I got that all lying wrong up, but it's all right. But I know that our faith and God's hand upon us built this business. There is no other answer or explanation. And so now when you got money, and a lot of money, everybody is your friend. <laughs> everybody needs a contribution. I want to welcome you tonight to this fundraiser. It's a, another wonderful evening. But you know, that's the right thing to do. It takes money to make things happen and to change the world. And so your money, when it's put here, as you can see in this room, has had a huge impact. And it will continue to have that impact. But that's what it takes. It takes successful people helping successful organizations do successful things. And if you have to honor by a guy like me to get that done, uh, hallelujah. We'll just enjoy that evening. <laughs> and so thank you, everybody.